Hello, you're watching Television Broadcasting Corporation. I am Zulatu Hamid. Coming up in this edition, the Sala groups and Turkish Azerbaijan investors assure President Bia of the large scale of rice they intend to produce in two districts targeting 11 chiefdoms. Witness continue to testify in the ongoing commissions of inquiry and the Ministry of Finance and the World Bank signed a finance agreement of 12 million United States dollars for the Sierra Leone financial in inclusion. All these stories and more lined up with us in the next 60 minutes. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Sala groups and the Turkish Azerbaijan investors have assured President Julius Madabiu that they are ready to produce rice on over 100 hectares in two districts targeting 11 chiefdoms. The team has already visited the locations and have also done several soil tests to know the types of crops they will be growing apart from rice. Tamaboro, according to Agriculture Minister Joseph Danema, is among the 11 chiefdoms that will benefit from the rice production. Hawa Mosi now reports. Agriculture is another component of the New Direction Agenda. As President Julius Madabia always says, that you cannot feed the brain without the stomach. This is the reason why his administration is making frantic efforts to make sure that the country produces enough rice to feed its citizens. Explaining about the development so far between the group and the ministry, Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Food Security Joseph Danema told President Bill that Salah Group and Consultation Investment have been working on a rice production program for the past five months and that they have now realized that dream. The Minister of Agriculture stated that the program will target 11 chiefdoms in two districts and produce rice on over 100 hectares of land, adding that the project will commence this farming season. This is a project, if and when it is implemented, can be a game changer in the rice sector in Sierra Leone. We are targeting 1.6 uh, million tons production when it is in full production capacity. And uh, currently we are consuming 900,000 tons. So we, that means there will be room for export and market for it is no problem. The head of Turkish Azerbaijan investors noted that they have been collaborating with the Ministry of Agriculture for the past five months in the area of planning and surveying the geographical location. He highlighted that they are also planning to support other projects apart from the agricultural sector as they have also promoted food production in other African countries where they can now export rice and other crops to Europe and America. He told President Gilles Madabu that they have even interacted with the community people in the two districts and they are very excited about the project. President Bill thanked the investors and assured them of his government's fullest support as agriculture is one of his flagship program. He is happy that they came to the country to see for themselves as they can be rest assured that government is committed. All they can do is to work on the timeline by updating the ministry about what they need to do on their own part and with their support to boost agriculture. The government will be able to stop the importation of rice. The agriculture is part, a major part of our development uh, programs that we are looking at. It's agriculture, <coughs> uh, producing food for Sierra Leone is one of those things that we have decided we have to do. We have the land, we have the rainfall, and uh, all we need is the infrastructure to be able to, to do agriculture. So this is a welcome project. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have to do as a government, we do that. We need to, before you go back, um, uh, have uh, a plan as to what is next to happen okay. so that uh, in the next uh, coming months we'll be able to go through the, the preparatory uh, phases of uh, the project and then decide on how we are going to implement as quickly as possible. 
In another development, the World Bank Country Director for Ghana, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, Henry Kigali, has updated President Chilos Madabi about developmental plans for the country. The country director noted that the meeting with President Chilos Madabi is a follow-up discussion that they had earlier planned regarding World Bank's support of various projects, especially the Western Area Electricity Project, and also increasing support in other areas. We uh, have some good news, <coughs> at least we hope. We will be increasing the uh, support that we make available to Sierra Leone, uh, both as a soft loan or what we call credit and also as grant uh, amounts which as you know will not be repaid. Um, then we'll talk about the human capital which we know is close and dear to your heart with the free education, free quality education program that you have introduced and also the uh, health projects. President Julius Madabio commended the team from World Bank for the support to the country, but when his administration assumed office, they noticed that the CEC electricity project was withdrawn. His administration is looking forward to working in close collaboration with World Bank in different areas, especially the New Direction flagship programs. We we'll definitely want to look at the country partnership framework, as uh, you've highlighted, and see how that is structured. Of course, uh, we continue to encourage our partners to support us in the human capital development uh, project, which is our flagship program, because we truly believe it is the only foundation to achieving sustainable development goals. It will give us uh, the opportunity to start on the right footing. Uh, we are excited to hear more about the rural uh, roads and bridges project and also definitely the business climate is something we have to work on. Minister of Finance, Jacob Joseph Safa told President Bill that the World Bank country manager, Gail Martin, has been very pleased to work with him in terms of the country's finances. The purpose of the World Bank country director's visit is to inform the president about new developmental plans for the country. SBC TV News are in Freetown, how are most reporting. Commission Witness 22 has told the Commission's of Inquiry that withdrawals were made from the Health Emergency Response Account without supporting documents at the time of the audit. Former Director of Finance, Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Festus Kuyembe, was led in evidence by State Prosecutor Oladipo Robin Mason. Princess Gibson was at Commission 64 and now reports. There in his testimony, former Director of Finance, Ministry of Health, Festus Kuyembe, said over 25 billion loans was withdrawn in respect of hazard payments to health staff by the National Ebola Response Center, NAC, without any supporting documents at the time of audit. Other withdrawals were also made without supporting documents, which were made into the district's medical health team's account. Beyond 815, below 195, is it dollars or yours? Dollars or yours? It's a bill. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Withdrawal amount into. Fifteen billion. Fifteen billion. 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 Yes. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Eight one five. Eight one five. Four nine five. Four nine five. One two zero. One two zero. Point. No sense. No sense. Okay, yes. Yes, what is it? From the health emergency response account. From the health emergency response account. Yes, emergency response account. Account number. Account number. Yes. Sir. Zero zero three. Zero zero three. Zero zero one. Zero one four one three four one three eight oh three eight oh three zero one all this is still one account. Yes, one account. Zero one four five four five. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and four hundred and fifty three million. Did what again? That's it, I'm pushing it. Okay. And four hundred and fifty three million. And uh, is this still 
Yes, Senhor. Ok, 400 hours. 53 million. Uh -huh. 571. 571. 500. 500, yes. From Minister of Health and Sanitation, miscellaneous account number. Minister of Health and uh, <coughs> Sanitation account number. 003. 001 The Emergency Operating Center, EOC, according to him, gave approval to expend from the account, pointing out that some supporting documents were made later but not at the time of audit. He also stated that over 300 million loans was also paid to Charles Mambu as loan for scaling up sensitization program on Ebola with directive from the former Minister of Health, which should have been refunded to the account upon approval of funds by UNICEF. However, upon receiving the said funds from UNICEF, he expanded the sensitization program and later produced supporting documents. Since we are on an emergency situation, <laughs> since... It was an emergency situation. Yes. UNICEF delayed this payment. UNICEF, UNICEF did what? Delayed the payment to Mr. Charles Mambu. UNICEF delayed payment to Charles Mambu. Uh -huh. That was the time the minister came in and asked us to pay this money from the account. Hold, hold on. And the minister. Intervened, you mean? Intervened. Intervened. And uh, asked us to pay this money to Mr. Uh, ask, 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 yes. ask. The intention that when UNICEF paid, yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Mambo should return the money back to us, to the accounts. Oh, it's for him to return it. Return the money back to the accounts. With the assurance that Charles Mambo should. Is it return, you say? Return back to the account. Return the money to the account. When you disappear, eh? Yes. Now, Mr. Bienve. Go on that. I want to finish this one. Yes. Finish it, please, sir. Yes. When Mr. Mambo received this money mm. from UNICEF, we, he has more sensations to, to be made in the provinces because of the emergency situation. So he eventually, he eventually still carried on to utilize the money that was given to him also by, by UNICEF to, to return back to the account. I don't understand. That is, he didn't return the money. He didn't, but he continued to expend it. Hold on, hold on. He stated as the Public Accounts Committee ordered Charles Mambu to make payments of funds but could not tell whether the said money has been paid. Also at Commission 64, Commissioner George Will has ordered Commission Witness 23 former Chief Operating Officer of the National Ebola Response Center, NAC, Stephen Gaugia, to make available to the Commission the total amount that was spent by NAC from December 2014 to April 2015 with supporting documents. is also to provide a list of vehicles and motorbikes upon folding up of the center during his next appearance. Commission 64 has been adjourned to Thursday, 28 February. Princess Gibson, SLBC News. Witness number nine of Commission 65, Senior Procurement Officer from the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Food Security, Francis Kaikai, has testified before Justice Bankole Thompson, Commissioner of Commission 65, at the ongoing Commissions of Inquiry. For more on this, let's join Maria Masuma. In his testimony, Senior Procurement Officer from the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Food Security, Francis Kaikai, tendered his written statement before Justice Bankole Thompson as Exhibit AF1-21 and other documents attached to it as Exhibit AG1-152. He informed the Commission that he was posted at the Ministry as Procurement Officer in May 2016 and was promoted as Senior Procurement Officer in 2017. He added that his function is to serve as the Secretary to the Procurement Committee in the Ministry that does the procurement processes and was supervised by Abubakar Koroma, the Permanent Secretary, 
who also serves as the chairman of the procurement committee. He said as senior procurement officer, one of his major procurements he had done was the procurement of fertilizers in 2016. According to witness number 9 of Commission 65, he resided over by Justice Bankole Thompson, senior procurement officer of the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Food Security, Francis Kaikai. The only undertook a restricted bidding process for the purchase of fertilizers, MPK 2020-20, MPK 15-15-15 and year 56. He added as procurement officers, the Procurement Act 2016 as amended and its attendance uh, resolutions 2006 dedicate that method of procurement as per circumstance that may have arise and its thresholds. He continued that he was informed by the former minister, Professor Monty Jones, that the ministry was faced with the task of purchasing the amount of 2,050 bags of 50 kg fertilizers, and that was a matter of urgency, and that they needed to deliver urgently against the next planting season. He added no advertisement was made for the restricted bidding processes, but however said that the invitation was sent to potential bidders. These were the five bidders you invited, right? Or not two? Answer, yes. Question, you also invited bidders, or not three, which is for urea 46%. Answer, yes sir. Question, do you recall the bidders? Answer, yes sir if I see them, and some, Food Plus Enterprises. What about Min Kim? Answer, I recall that Anjan, Basco Hooding, Portal, and Sons, Food Plus Enterprises, but Min Kim is for Lot 1. Question, do you, do you also invited Balsam, Reyes, Balsam Enterprises, Royal International Supplies, Centano, Brown Text, Westhouse Yemen Supplies. What was the elastic? In his submission, Council representing the places of interest, Lansana Dumbuya, informed the Commission that he was served only on Tuesday evening for Wednesday hearings, which is said he will not be able to cross examine the witness. Justice Bankole Thompson responded that he is here to ensure that they continue to respect the doctrine and the quality of the proceedings. We will in fact it is my it, it is very relevant, my lord. And here, of course, I mean council on the other side will have ample opportunity to reopen that issue on the first examination. The, lord, the problem I have with the question. There is a document before the witness, and we all know what is in the document. The Lord, if he is asking the witness, as per his, you know, designation, what he was sure of at the time, it's different. But if you are saying again, as per the document, when we know what is in the document, the Lord, that is my problem. He can give his own sign without the document. But if you are saying the document, when we know what is in the document, the Lord, I, I, well, I, I think also that. Um, if he pursues that line of um, examination in chief, it can e eventually become a double-edged weapon. Meanwhile, counsel representing the state appealed to his colleague to allow him to lead his witnesses properly and not to intervene during the process. SLBC News, Maria Masuma reporting. Oxfam Sierra Leone has commenced a four-day engagement with partners on the Global Enough campaign to end violence against women and girls in Sierra Leone. The campaign, which was launched in 2016, is the only worldwide standalone gender justice campaign. The four-day engagement, which is taking place at the Hill Valley Hotel, Signa Hill, brought together partners that will work with Oxfam to implement the campaign in the country. As Sheku Sumaila reports, the four-day engagement will end with a strategy to combat violence against girls in schools. Ending violence against women and girls in the country has taken a center stage in responding to rights issues in the country. NGOs, civil society organizations are now directing their efforts to this campaign. Many people believe that the synergy is as a result of the political will that is being 
manifested by this new government. Earlier this year, the First Lady Fatima Bio launched the Hands of Our Girls campaign at the Bintumani Conference Center in Freetown. This ceremony saw in attendance of our First Ladies from Africa. On the 7th of February 2019, President Julius Mada Bio declared rape and sexual violence as a national emergency in which he said Anyone convicted of sexual penetration of a minor will be sentenced to life. On the 22nd February 2019, Parliament approved the National Emergency, which has now created a legal platform for offenders to be severely punished. For further show of commitment and political will, President Julius Marabio made an unannounced visit to the Aberdeen Women's Center, where survivors of rape and sexual violence are being treated. This enough campaign by Oxfam was launched to end violence against women and girls across the country. The four-day forum which brought together state and non-state actors is to develop a strategy on how to end violence against girls in schools, which is in support of the wider campaign against sexual violence and other forms of violence perpetrated against women and girls in this country. According to the country director of Oxfam, Billy Abimbila, his organization believes that the combination of a strong societal condemnation of violence against women and girls and enforcement of existing laws to end what he described as evil practice is absolutely necessary. He said a campaign that influences more people to believe that they have the power to change social norms has the potential to both reduce violence and improve responses for survivors of violence. Mr. Abimila noted that his organization has been implementing the Education for Active Citizenship Project, which focuses on empowering women and youths to be active citizens who advocate and demand for their rights. He said ending violence against women and girls, especially girls in school, is a key focus of this particular project, which is being implemented through partners across the country. He said Oxfam's Leon Enough campaign will focus mainly on violence in schools and will seek to address social norms that perpetrate violence, particularly against girls in school environment. We, we aim to discuss some of the root causes of this violence, not just looking at violence per se, but what contributes to people um, inflicting such things against our young uh, boys and girls. So we are looking at social norms, we are looking at some of the practices that can contribute to violence against especially girls in schools and see how we can engage with all stakeholders uh, in line with the, the His Excellency the President's declaration of the state of emergency on rape and other forms of violence against children to see how we can reduce this evil practice in our society. The head of program Oxfam Sierra Leone, Innocent Nuta Baraka, said they believe that having a strategy for such a campaign is key. The campaign, he said, will complement government's efforts in addressing the menace in the country. The gender and human rights lead Oxfam Sierra Leone, Konima Bobo Kamara, said Oxfam Sierra Leone will be working with a local partner, Community Action to Restore Life, CAL, and School Authorities to implement the project. She said that ending violence against girls in schools will have a far-reaching positive effect as they grow up into womanhood. The, the campaign that we'll be carrying on, we want young people to be actively involved. So we, we also have participants. Men should really now be careful, especially with the declaration of the national emergency, as tough measures are now in place to punish rapists, and those who sexually penetrate girls. This is according to what many speakers at this opening ceremony said. Reporting for SRBC News, I am Sheku Smiler. Persons with disability who normally hang out at the cotton tree in the central part of Freetown have alleged that the mayor of Freetown told them to leave the premises without any prior notice since their camaraderie of the story. According to the chairman of Sierra Union on Disability Issues, Santigi Kabo, the Freetown City Council had had a memorandum of understanding with beggars. He noted the agreement was that the beggars should use the parameters of the cotton tree until a favorable place was constructed for them. 
Mr. Kabo, however, stated that they were taken by surprise for the beggars to be asked out of the cotton tree by the Freetown City Council. In the slides, the mayor of Freetown City Council, Yvonne Akitoya, in a press statement, said that the council never had a MOU with disabled and beggars. She said the council only held a meeting with them to inform them about the forthcoming celebration of the 227th anniversary of the cotton tree and that they will be expecting an important guest in the country that will visit the cotton tree, which is one of the touristic sites in the country and therefore needs to be beautified. The mayor added issues discussed during the meeting with disabled persons and beggars, including needs assessment of nearly 50 of them. Representatives of those who attended the initial meeting with the mayor were also present at the press briefing to ascertain what had been agreed upon. Cindy Kamara, SLBC. Meanwhile, Dr. Abdullah Dumbuya, a disability rights activist, engaged the disgruntled disabled people at Cotton Tea and the men. But what's the outcome of the engagement he had with the persons with disability and the city mayor? He spoke to our own friend, Patrick Saleh. Body, which is now poised to transform the municipality. As a stakeholder, what does it mean and how, what steps have been taken to resolve it? Well, first of all, I think the, the, the challenges um, for persons with disabilities, this has a tendency of reinforcing the negative perception towards persons with disabilities. For the municipality, I think this kind of uh, uh, challenges their, um, their drive towards transforming Freetown, which has a component on disability specifically. And I must first of all perhaps start by saying that um, this is a misunderstanding um, and it has an element of misinformation. Um, I think uh, perhaps the other lesson that I would uh, assume that we all need to learn is that uh, we need to always engage the stakeholders when it comes to disability issues. And I know the mayor has been doing that because she's established the, um, the disability sector group, which um, we've been working on to look at uh, the educational aspect of persons with disabilities within the municipality, but also to look at livelihoods. So ultimately, it will benefit persons with disabilities, even those who are on the streets begging. Uh, on the disability part uh, side of things, I think um, um, it is very difficult to get somebody to tell somebody with a disability to get out of the street without finding an alternative. And I think that's where the misunderstanding comes from. Um, so I think um, we have to find a way out. And this is why um, so many of us have come together and decided that we need to sort this thing out. And I think one way is to try and be very accurate with our information and making sure that if we want to help persons with disabilities, that we make sure that we tell them that this is what we need to do. And that's, to some extent, I think it's been done because I understand um, both the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities as well as the Office of the Mayor have requested for a needs assessment. And I think the problem there now is um, there may have been some aspect of raising people's hopes and if those hopes are not met and people's hopes are dashed, then that's where all of this thing has come from. Because I understand from the chair lady, whom I've sat with them today, I've sat with the chair lady, the chairman, and um, uh, now sign, and I've tried to go to the bottom of it. And I think part of the problem is um, they, they felt that perhaps promises have been made to them and these promises have not been delivered. And, and, and if you then turn around and say, well, um, with the best of intentions, that we want you out of the streets, and you've not met these needs as yet, in as much as there's been work going towards meeting these needs. But, you know, one of the challenges we have is about everything in, and it's not just, it's not a matter of disability. It's about everybody in Syria and what I've observed. It's the here and now, everything, everybody wants something now. Love One Another campaign has provided solar water taps to the Reverend Ernest Bonnet, Nursery Primary Junior and Secondary School, Koidu Town in Connor District. The gesture is to complement government's efforts in providing free and quality education for children in the country. Rose Kunima Stevens reports. 
Kano district is among districts in the county that have majority of youth dropouts as most children drop from school to look for diamonds. A non-profit making organization, Love One Another Campaign Sierra Leone, had been demonstrating love by providing educational centers in various districts to enable vulnerable kids, especially Ebola orphans, have access to free and quality learning. According to the founder and country director of Love and Another Campaign, Dr. Christian Bell, this is just one of what they have been doing right across the country. He said the Reverend Ernst Bonnet School was in dire need of water facility for the kids as Koidu Town is constrained with pure drinking water. He said that the venture was realized due to the support of their partners. Dr. Bell further said that they are planning on providing more of basic social amenities, including conducive learning environments for other areas in need. The executive director maintained that Reverend Ernst Bonnet Junior Secondary School will soon have added classroom buildings for senior secondary. He, app he appealed to the Ministry of Education to approve the teachers in the school to enable them to concentrate on teaching the children with ease. This is also in support of the uh, President's vision of uh, free and uh, quality education. Um, we, the children we, in the primary school are not paying anything now, it's free. We think we, we are actually supporting this free education. And talking about uh, quality education, it's not just the, the teachers, but we also need to consider the environment. The deputy mayor applauded the gesture and thanked the donors, noting that this is expected of every well-meaning Sierra Leonean, especially now that the New Direction government has prioritized education as one of government's development programs. Pure drinking water and clean environment for the residents in Koidu City will enable children pay more attention to their learning. One of the donor partners, Professor Frank Mayer, said he is happy because they have fulfilled a promise they made to help humanity. He said when he visited the school two years back, he saw a young girl struggling to fetch water from a spoiled hand pump, and he felt so sad that he promised. And this was the nicest moment yesterday when we opened the well. Right, 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 right. This is pure drinking water. Even for people from Germany, it's okay. The cops, the cops. To solve the water problem, which he has realized, the community people promised to be monitoring the facility against misuse. Reporting for SLBC, Rose Konima Stevens. As part of his nationwide social mobilization tour to address some of the outstanding issues around the free quality education and the cry of teachers for increasing salaries, the Ministry of Basic and Senior School Education, Alpha Timbo, has engaged school authorities, paramount chiefs and other stakeholders on the activities of the ministry regarding the free quality education. The meeting was held at the Tonkalili District Council Hall in Maboka. A reporter in Maboka, Abdul Karim Kano, witnessed the meeting and filed in this report. The Ministry of Basic and Senior School Education engaged school authorities, teachers, paramount chiefs, and other education stakeholders at the Tonkolili District Council Hall in Maboka on the activities of the Ministry regarding the free quality education. Addressing a jam packed hall in Maboka, the Minister of Basic and Senior School Education, Alpha Usman Timbo, said the free quality education focuses on increasing access, improved quality, and system strengthening to ensure the project succeeds. He said his ministry is working on restructuring the general governance system of education in the country in a bid to make positive impacts on the country's education system. Minister Alpha Timbo noted that government has injected huge resources into the free quality education through the provision of teaching and learning materials and the payment of fees for pupils in all government and government assisted schools in the country. The Minister of Basic and Senior School Education appealed to teachers and school heads to exercise patience while his ministry continued to look into issues around approval of schools and teachers, reassessment and promotion of teachers, and other issues affecting the development of education in the districts, pointing out that plans are on the way to rehabilitate the government secondary school for boys, Maborka, and other government schools in the country. 
National Coordinator of the Free Quality Education Program, Amara Soa, noted that the increase in the budgetary allocation to education has clearly shown government's determination to make a turnaround in the education sector. He re-echoed government's commitment to enhance standards in our education system. Chairperson of the Tonkolili District Council, Yabum Sisi, appealed for all to support the free quality education program for the benefits of the children and the country at large, adding that the council will remain supportive to the implementation of the free quality education program in Tonkolili districts. Head of the Conference of Principals of Secondary Schools and SLTU Chairperson in Tonkolili District, Francis Melvin Sanko, urged the minister to speed up the processes of the ministry, especially with regards to the approval, promotion and reassessment of teachers. Questions and answers formed part of the meeting. The Sise family of Songo Mokoyama village has concluded their testimonies before Justice Anna Atupa of Commission 67 on the land property which was bought by HF Mortgage in 2014. The last of the three witnesses, Abu Sise, told Commissioner Atububa that it was in Commission 67 and after a monologue program that he had for the second time that their property was sold for over 6 billion leons. So Ibasamura reports. So help me God. Abu Sise became the last person in the Sise family to give evidence on the contentious issue of the family land at Songo Mokoyama that was sold for more than five times the amount the family received from HFC mortgage. He, like his predecessors of the same family, stated that the initial negotiation for, the acre of, for an acre of land was 10 million leons, but that they were prevailed upon by the bank to sell at 3,500,000 leons per acre. Earlier, Lead Persons of Interest Council, Ibrahim Sori Kuruma, completed cross-examination of the head of the Sise family, Abbas Sise. The money the lawyer paid to Abbas, whether it was confirmed to him by Abbas, he said yes. Which other instructions to the lawyer again? He said no to the list. The list was prepared at family level. It wasn't given no, to no, the lawyer. No, no, listen. That's, a, that's, that's, that's on record now. He said the list was not given to the lawyer, it was at family level. So my query is... But he did not say that. And, and, I, and, I, and I don't like objecting to what counsel is doing. He's deliberately attempting to tell this witness what to say. And it, it's not fair. No, no, I am deliberately attempting from stopping you from confusing this witness. I'm very clear on that. And I have the right to say it. He received direct payment from Asmia Fofana on behalf of the family. Now you are asking him whether he gave instructions for other beneficiaries. Who are the other beneficiaries outside the CC family? For which monies have been paid to Abbas already? Council Kuruma confronted the witness with whether he ever granted power of attorney to lawyer Ashmia Fofana for the disbursement of money apart from the 150 million leons and 100 million leons to the lawyer and mediator respectively, which he denied doing. Meanwhile, Justice William Atuguba has begun hearing evidence from one Judge Taylor on the sale of another parcel of land at Bathurst. Judge narrated before the commission that he was approached by one Bontin Thomas for the land on behalf of HFC Mortgage in 2012. The total sum of money calculated for the land, according to the witness, should have been 143 million leons, but ended up receiving only 66 million leons, all of which was paid through transfer and in cash. His testimony in chief continues on Thursday, February 28th, before Justice Atsuguba. Soriba Samura, SLBC News, Freetown. The Ministry of Finance and the World Bank have signed a finance agreement of 12 million United States dollars for the Sierra Leone financial inclusion. The objective of the project is to increase interoperability of digital payments and access to financial services. The signing ceremony <clears throat> was held at the Ministry of Finance Conference Hall, Judge Street, Freetown. Esther Marie Samora has more. The financial inclusion project is a drive to increase the efficiency in financial service and financial inclusion 
which will contribute to the economic development and allow institutions to provide new financial services and increase access to these services. The project will be focusing on enhancing the digital payment, which will help enable the institutions provide new financial services and have more income generating services to be more viable entities. It will also ensure the viability of the payment system through increasing usage, which will seek to help increase the usage and viability of the retail payment switch and pre-existing payment system, among others. Deputy Bank Governor Dr. Ibrahim Stevens said he is happy that the project is being finalized, noting that for a very long time they have been anticipating that the government will sign a project that will advance financial inclusion in this economy to the next level. He said the Bank of Sierra Leone launched the Sierra Leone National Strategy for Financial Inclusion in 2017 and it will help to provide access to affordable finance. I mean, it will benefit Sierra Leoneans by increasing accessibility, the effectiveness of conducting financial transactions, but in terms of the government, the, um, the collection of revenue would become more efficient and uh, efficiency leads to a lot of gains and those gains would be realized in terms of increases in government revenue. Minister of Finance Jacob Jusso Safa thanked the World Bank for their continued support in the development side of the country, maintaining that the government will ensure they monitor the resources provided for it to be used for their intended purpose. Well, overall, I think the design is really in the context of the international. Remember, remember, it was my first this The World Bank representative Henry Kirali said the signing ceremony of the financial inclusion project marks a milestone in the financial sector and the country, emphasizing that the process will help address the low level of financial inclusion and promote domestic revenue. The document was signed by the World Bank representative and the government of Sierra Leone. Esther Marie Samoa, SLBC. Hundreds of nurses, midwives, and other health officials are to be trained by the National School of Midwifery. The country has been grappling with neonatal and maternal mobility. One of the key solutions to prevent women and babies to live is to ensure that pregnant and suckling mothers have access to be trained to midwife working in the enabling environment. Was Kurima Stevens reports. Health is one of the key priorities in the government's development agenda for which quality training is needed to enable mothers and babies survive, especially during childbirth. Doctors and senior medical officials at the session are to make sure that nurses and midwives who want to be enrolled at the School of Midwifery are capacitated with skills that meet international best practice. The Minister of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Alpha Wui, informed the midwives and other health workers that even though support will be provided by humanitarian organizations or other forms of capacity building that will upgrade the profession, the New Direction government is committed to developing the healthcare delivery for sustainable development. Officials at the orientation informed the Guardian that much is expected of the midwives as they are entering for training. They should be ready to behave responsibly and give back to society upon the completion of their courses. These health officials at the orientation ceremony informed the students that the establishment of the midwifery schools in the country has seen a growing number of midwives, noting that government is making every effort to not only improve on health care in the country, but provide quality care that would prevent mothers and their babies from death. We are going to do an upgrading, a bridge program 
where we are now going to offer diploma to midwives who already have certificates. So the training basically is to upgrade them to a level where they will be able to deliver quality, respectful and safe maternity care to women and children out there. The maternal mortality indices are occurring and we want to have a positive impact through the training. The training is basically going to focus on the three domains of learning. We're going to upgrade their knowledge, the skills and attitude, which is also very important. So it is important that we bring midwives together. Now there's a lot of change in the academic world. Midwifery education is moving from um, a lower level to a higher level. The principal National School of Midwifery, Dr. Joan Shepard, said priority is placed on quality education as the students will be trained on requisite skills that will help pregnant women during childbirth. Christiana Kamara expressed appreciation to the health officials for organizing the training. Reporting for SLBC, Rose Konima Stevens. A consortium of civil society under the Civil Society Consortium on Community Accountability and Service Delivery has called on lawmakers to speedily enact the amendment of the 2019 anti-corruption bill that has been laid to the House of Parliament weeks ago to amend the 2018 ACC Act. The consortium made the plea at a stakeholder consultative engagement on a new ACC bill held at the slash office at Campbell Street in Freetown. For more on this, let's join Ibrahim Samoa. Public Relations Officer Civil Society Consortium on Accountability and Service Delivery, Moses Mambu said, the consortium has championed several issues around governance, accountability and transparency. He said the stakeholders' engagement is part of the Memorandum of Understanding signed between them and the Anti-Corruption Commission to help educate the public on the fight against corruption and to popularize the 2019 bill. The Director of Outreach and Public Education Anti-Corruption Commission, Patrick Sandin, said the amendment of the Act will give the Commission more powers to fight corruption in the country. He said the 2018 Anti-Corruption Act and the Asset Declaration Regulations are before Parliament for amendment, noting that it will mature in three days' time since the day they were laid. Mr. Sandin cited the areas of amendment which include Asset Exit Declaration of Public Officials, Compulsory Restitution, Impersonation of ACC Staff, and Protection of Witnesses, among others. Reading a press statement on behalf of the consortium, the national coordinator William Saul Lamin said they took the campaign to support the Anti-Corruption Commission to help raise awareness on the new bill. He noted over the years the commission has been faced with bottlenecks in enforcing punitive measures with open-ended regulations in the 2018 Act. Amendment of Section 36 of Act Number 12 of 2008, the court shall order a full payment of amounts misappropriated into the consolidated form. Mm -hmm. Amendment of section 76 of Act number 12 of 2008, replacing the fines of 3 million euros with a new fine of 30 million euros. People have to be serious this time around. Replacing the term of imprisonment of not less than six months with a new term of imprisonment of not less than three years. Amendments of section 78, section 85, and section 90, section 89 of Acts number 12 of 2008. Similar engagement will be replicated to the regions. Ibrahim Samura, Frita. And now for some African news. The runner-up in Nigeria's presidential election has rejected the result as a throwback to the jackpot era of military dictatorship. Atiku Abubakar criticized what he called a scam election and has vowed to go to court. 
President Muhammadu Buhari, who was re-elected in Saturday's poll, insisted that it had been free and fair. Delays and violence marred the run-up election, but no independent observer has criticized the cited electoral fraud. Egyptian state media has said at least 25 people have been killed and 50 injured after a train crash sparked a large fire at Cairo's main railway station. The train hit a buffer stop near the end of a busy platform at Ramsey station, which is in the city center. The collision caused the train's fuel tank to explode, setting the platform and nearby building salit. The cause of the crash is not yet clear, but only but only after later, Transport Minister Hisham Arafat resigned. The authorities in Kenya are struggling to contain fires which are spreading on the slopes of Mount Kenya, destroying vegetation and killing midwife. And now for some entertainment news. Music is a way of disseminating information to the public. Some schools of thought say that music is for dropouts, while some believe that music is for intelligent people who are ready to learn things out of the classroom by giving us messages through songs. Dreams Traditional Band is a musical band that believes in the latter. The Dreams Traditional Band Sierra Leone was formed during the Ebola epidemic, playing music from ghetto to ghetto using acoustic guitar in order to bring solace to people at that time. Alfred Tommy, aka Dan Man, is one of the members that form this dream traditional band. The group comprises nine members with the leading vocalist Latimos, who was once a member of Paradise Family. He said the group was formed to help teach young mus musicians how live band should be played. Dreams traditional band is um, uh, here to gear music in the right direction. By this I mean to bring music live. Because in Sierra Leone, I mean, we are seeing, we are seeing that people are not really playing the music with the ABC rudiment. Because the music too has its own rudiment. He said at present the band is looking for sponsors, and their plans are to take Sierra Leone music to an international level. He said the group has done documentaries sensitizing people on some dangers in life, and that the group is at present working on an album titled Revolution that he believes will go international. From that upcoming album, the group has decided to release two musical videos, Joko and Show Me Love. On this song, he has this to say. Well, Joko, if I can be specific, is um, uh, bad-minded bad people in society. You can have a friend, eh? You can even be talking with him. Then the heart will not be like what you are seeing with the teeth. You see, the teeth can be clean, but the heart can be that am uh, dusty. This one place, it don't make me waste food be coco. This so tell me about show me love. Uh, which love do you want people to show? The positive love. The which, the, which one is the positive love? The, 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 the agape love that was there of old. Be on the morning, come close and let me take this love John. I will take it to the sky, I will take it to the stars, I will take it to the moon for a good love. That man, on behalf of his members, urged the general public to support Selena music and also cautioned musicians in Sierra Leone to embark on playing live musical instruments and live bands. So the government asked for total support in order to help boost the entertainment industry in the country. Meanwhile, the controversial Arabian singer Al Kelly was released from jail on Monday afternoon after being indicted by a grand jury on 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse against four alleged victims. The R&B singer secured his release by paying 10% of his $1 million bail amount.
The 52-year-old appeared in court on Monday after spending the weekend in court county jail as he failed to pay the $100,000 payment necessary for him to make bail. According to entertainment reports, R. Kelly repeatedly denied all claims against him. Renewed interest in the allegation emerged earlier this year with the release of a Lifetime and documentary series Surviving R. Kelly. And now in the world of sports, let's now join Esther Marie Samoa. Good evening, it's Sports Updates on News R. I am Esther Marie Samoa. In this edition, Easter Lions Football Club secured a one on draw with Central Parade Football Team in the ongoing Ceylon Premier League. Abdul Bangla opened the scoreline for Easter Lions Football Club before Alpha Conte equalized through a spectacular corner kick. Well, we now will be out of the match. Tigers football team defeated anti George Super Club by a goal to nail at the Lungi Central Field in Lungi. That's all for sports in this edition of Sports Update. I am Esther Marie Samoa. Thanks for watching. To end the news, the main points. The Salah groups and Turkish Azerbaijan investors have assured President Bill of the large scale of rice they intend to produce in two districts targeting 11 chiefdoms. Witnesses have continued testifying in the ongoing commissions of inquiry, and the Ministry of Finance and the World Bank have signed a finance agreement of 12 million United States dollars for the Sierra Leone financial inclusion. That's all in this edition of the news. I am Zola Tuhamik. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.